uh, the plaintiffs on that issue. And so we are definitely keeping an eye. And of course, those are some of the issues that we shall be discussing here. And of course, um, our big conversation this morning is around the upcoming Conference of Parties uh, 29, which is happening in the city of Baku, Azerbaijan. And critical issues are going to be discussed, which are going to define uh, the world of climate change in the years to come. And of course, that's a conversation that we are going to have here. I'm about to unveil my list of guests. But before we do that, I would just want to hear from uh, Mithika Mwendo. He's a governance expert and also the uh, executive director at the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance is joining us this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to pick up your brains on uh, what is happening um, in the courts. I mean, this, uh, this impeachment motion, I mean, it has taken, you know, more time than everyone was expecting. And of course, the argument before the courts. Uh, what do you make it? What do, what do you make out of this? Um, well, um, you know, I, I want first of all to up and this dilemma because uh, I've had a very heated debate with uh, some lawyers. This is, uh, you know, the territory of, of, of lawyers. Mm -hmm. So uh, the showdown and everything, so they may not want a person like us, mm -hmm. uh, who are not lawyers, to, to, be, to be part of this conversation. Yeah. But more importantly is uh, really looking at uh, what has been happening since, actually not even since the impeachment, but overall the whole conversation, uh, it is testing you know, the maturity of our democracy and the institutions, our courts, mm -hmm. the separation of, pow of powers uh, within the three arms of the government, that is uh, the, the uh, parliament, um, that is uh, judiciary, and uh, of course uh, the executive. So as concerned Kenyans, as a human rights activist, as a one of the people who actively participated in the birthing of the new uh, uh, 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. We have confidence of our institutions and we, we hope that justice will be delivered on either side. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are looking at. And the, the secondly, it's about the, 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 the of course, the, it's, everything is about politics at play. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to relate at this because I am a currently a climate change activist but of course mm -hmm. it happens climate change is about everything it's about governance mm -hmm. which we have it's about um, uh, economies of the country it's about the socio cohesion all these things actually have interplay they have bearing on everything which we do when we talk about the implementation of the 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 ndc's national determined contribution yeah. then our obligation under the paris agreement and our our strategy national climate change strategy and everything all of them actually requires a stable government requires stability a stable governance and so as other Kenyans are, are, are keen, as other Kenyans are, are concerned about what is happening, mm -hmm. because you cannot ignore it. Actually, the country is polarized, mm -hmm. deeply polarized, mm -hmm. unless we bury our hand into the sand like that proverbial ostrich and assume that, uh, fine, we want to kick out the Rigi and that's all, mm -hmm. there will be no repercussions. I think we are at a very critical moment a polarized country, you know, we have other challenges which we have to address, which the government has to address. In a way, I can assure you that that is going to affect that, whatever the outcome at the, at the court. There, there, there will be some ripples. Yeah, sure. And of course, as you rightly put it, I mean, you know, uh, a, a, a quiet climate, uh, a political climate, you know, is also good for investment, mm. Mm. it's good for the development of a country, yes. and, and, and so it's the desire, you know, of each and every Kenyan that, uh, you know, this issue is resolved uh, amicably and as quickly as possible so that mm. people can go back to yes. uh, their normal lives. And uh, bef before now we, we delve into the issues at hand uh, this morning, what is your message to, uh, you know, the thousands of or millions of Kenyans, I mean, who are watching, you know, the proceedings before the court and wondering, I mean, what, what, what is happening in that country? I, I think what inspires me, um, again, as a citizen, as a proud Kenyan, is actually the tenacity of our institutions. You remember there was a very hurried, you know, kind of um, uh, way of uh, ensuring that uh, things happen quickly. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the court slammed the brakes. Mm -hmm. And that actually tells you the country which we are, I don't believe 
this could have happened in other countries, mm -hmm. including in Zimbabwe, where she comes from. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she, she watches it uh, uh, and she enjoys the, mm -hmm. the democratic space with which we have. So it is our role, wherever I am, whether I come fr I'm from the village, from the organization in which I work, from where I sit, I think we need to protect our democracy. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so, whether, and, and, and this is the responsibility of everybody, whether it's a judge, uh, advocate from both sides, mm -hmm. and those who are concerned, we expect justice to be delivered, yeah. whether to Rigiji and it's those who impeached him. Of course, they are calling it a, pol a political process, mm -hmm. but I hope the bench will go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. And uh, don't, for, don't, don't forget that I also come from Lima. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I also have my opinion. Yes. Uh, we are also interacting with people in the Lima. Mm -hmm. And we are really, of course, it's very people are di not even divided. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of concerns. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say where the, which side I am, mm -hmm. but really... It is a big concern in the so-called Mulima. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, when you go back to the Mulima, people just tell them that, uh, I mean, everything is well. The economy is doing well. And the is, is, these issues are going to be handled politically and legally. And we'll it definitely is not go back to, to tell business. them. Yeah. Uh, they know. You know, everybody sees. You mm -hmm. know, all of us Kenyans, the level of consciousness with, with which we are operating now, mm -hmm. everybody knows. Actually, people have meant even their minds. You saw the during the, the, the public participation. Mm -hmm. You saw what was happening. Yeah. So so everybody, you know, have their opinion wherever whether you are small that's the beauty of Kenya. Mm -hmm. That you are allowed to mm -hmm. really articulate yourself without any repercussions. And that is what I wouldn't actually want and urge the KK government to uphold. Tol political tolerance, mm -hmm. you know, is very, very important. We don't need to agree. But you, if you are, the, the majority will always have their way. But also we need to give the minorities, minorities their yes, say. Yes. Very good. I mean, uh, 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 Memory Ch uh, Kachambwa is the executive director at uh, the um, Feminet, which is um, an NGO that deals with uh, championing the welfare of uh, women and children. You are from Zimbabwe, and, 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 and Mithika uh, Daktari has said something that... Um, this does not happen in Zimbabwe. Uh, 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 when you look at, 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 at this, this whole thing that is exploding and happening, you know, before our eyes, and when you're talking to uh, your, your families and relatives and friends in Zimbabwe, what do you tell them? Um, I think we, we look and watch and learn. Mm -hmm. I think it's just not about, it's also for Africa. You know, I think it's how Africa is actually defining its democratic governance. Mm -hmm. And I think Kenya has been one of the bench setting countries mm -hmm. in terms of how they deal with their democratic space, mm -hmm. uh, having the liberty to use the court system, the legal system, to use as much of the means and uphold their constitution. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's for Africa to be able to also look at what does it mean when countries have a constitution and they are using that constitution they are using the legal means to ensure that there's voice mm -hmm. from the people mm -hmm. so i think it's it's a it's a time of liberation for the continent yes and i think it's good to be in kenya at such a time mm -hmm. where we are able to also really look at um having the the look look at the different um constituencies come together mm -hmm. and of course for me um coming from the women's movement it would be like we're not hearing a lot to say uh can we have what we call a zebra system where you know in some countries if um one leader is a male then the second is a female mm -hmm. so for us that we, that is what <laughs> we'll be hoping to say mm -hmm. we want to have more african women as leaders mm -hmm. and really support women to be 
out there and to be able to, to you know, to take the leadership positions. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, um, it, I think it's great to also see the young people. I think it's one thing to see young people being able to have a voice. Uh, we are seeing some of the lawyers who are presenting uh, some of the legislators. I think um, the Kenya Parliament also has a lot of legislators who are also young. So also seeing that voice because I think governance affects everyone. Very so good. the continent is watching. The continent and is watching. And, and I think I, I, before, before I allow you in, um, uh, Dr. Mithika, the, the beauty of this is that uh, what, what, what is unfolding our, you know, before our eyes is the fact that uh, we are seeing this battle of wits being fought in the corridors of justice as opposed to the street where, you know, tunnels of events, you know, can be unpredictable. And that's, that's the beauty of, you know, the Kenyan democracy whereby there is clear roles of the judiciary, the executive, and of course, um, uh, 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 the, 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 the parliament. Uh, uh, and, 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 and so we are seeing it, you know, being displayed where parliament is saying, this, this is our forte, this is, this is our turf. Then you have the judiciary saying, yes, we agree with you, this is what you're doing, but also this is also our area. And so it's going to be a very interesting um, uh, conversation going forward. And as you're saying, I mean, Kenya is setting up the pace. It has never happened in Africa. Uh, so, you know, Kenya has set the pace. And of course, I'm sure, you know, so many Africans are going to uh, picking up, you know, a few lessons and he here and there. And what you said about um, giving women more voices, you know, in, 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 in the leadership space. I remember, I think it was last year where President uh, William Ruto proposed that in the future, we should have a situation whereby if the president is a male, then uh, the deputy uh, 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 should be a female and vice versa. And so uh, I can see you want to say something, Mithika? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, for your information, I've always been a gender champion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm of one of the few men f feminists. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been so, <laughs> so with that. I think uh, um, it is. It is. Um, I, I think we need really everyone. We need uh, whether it's affirmative action, which uh, Kenya has tried. You know, like this constitution. Even one of the key questions which were being asked uh, by this uh, when 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 even the attorneys for the uh, for the RIGI uh, initially during the uh, the impeachment. Uh, uh, process mm. at uh, National Assembly was whether that parliament is properly constituted because mm -hmm. there is uh, a law uh, which says that uh, within a particular time after the, uh, the 2010 constitution, uh, we need that uh, parliament uh, to really ensure that it has a balance between the genders. And that has not been done. So somebody was questioning that. In fact, should this be an illegal parliament operating without also talking about uh, the questions which were being um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 asked about the, the same parliament that it was impeached on, uh, on, on June 25th mm -hmm. when there was, uh, it was overrun by, by Kenyans. So there are so many questions. But uh, those are some of the fundamental issues which a society need. We have come to realize that, you know, it is very difficult sometimes uh, to implement. And that is the, the question of uh, policy implementation has been really the biggest obstacle mm -hmm. to even development in, 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 in this country. But only, not even the space which we are, even at African level, we have got very brilliant uh, ideas, very brilliant policies, very brilli uh, brilliant uh, uh, strategies. But when it comes really to implementing them, mm -hmm. then it becomes zero. And, uh, and those are uh, the, the questions which we should be asking ourselves. Should we be having policy after policy without implementation? How do we focus on implementation mm -hmm. more than uh, you know that framing because one thing which is very important uh, as a pu public policy expert is that uh, the policy does not end into into just framing it ends in up to the level of implementation mm -hmm. when you are framing you are putting together a, so you need to really think about implementation but that is not what happens so you see our partners the development partners and even after implementation you go to the next stage, stage of evaluation evaluation yeah. so mm. that you understand whether this was done 
So we just moved to pick very, very quick, fru uh, uh, low lying no fruits. fruits. But the hard questions, the hard things which are supposed like that, the, the, the question of gender has mm -hmm. never been addressed. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, 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 and you see, many people were really um, wondering whether the religious issue is even a national issue or a priority issue. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking about, about uh, uh, the NSSF chief crisis? Are we thinking about the education crisis? Are we thinking about, um, about uh, uh, um, other things which are really very pertinent, the Andani issue and all those, whatever they are saying, all this? So you see, when you look at Kenyans, they have their own opinion mm -hmm. on what really should be the priority for our leaders. Yeah. But as it happened in June, 25, the, the, what culminated into June 25, you know, it's really imperviousness of our leaders really to listen to the people. That's the most important thing, and yeah. that is the issue which we want really to address. I think that people understand what they want, and they are seeing what is happening. So I, as I'm telling you, they have their own opinion. Is this a priority or not the priority? Of course, to the political class, of which sometimes I can remove my, 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 my hat of the executive director of an African Climate Justice uh, Alliance and become also as more politicians at mm -hmm. the village where I come from. Mm -hmm. And also, I have an opinion that uh, this thing really needs to be handled very well. Of course, you know, we have reached a situation where it's a point of no return. Mm -hmm. There are things need to be settled. Do we have, everyone is saying, we have two deputy presidents. So who do we have? <laughs> this is the court, the court which is, you know, yeah. Kidiki is my friend. We, mm -hmm. we studied with him in Moi University. Mm -hmm. So we have been together. We yeah. have seen all things. I'm very happy for him to being the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. But then there are many things, fundamental things which really we need to look into for this country to drive. One thing is we need really tranquility. We need peace. But at what expense are we going to have that peace? Of course, every time we are reminded, oh, look now, I have friends in Sudan. Sudan. You will know the South Professor Sudan, uh, oh, your friend, oh, mm -hmm. when you, whom you meet every time in, during the COP. Mm. You know, most of those guys have, 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 have fled their country because of that uh, actually insecurity there because of the conflict. You, we have uh, many countries, Liberia coming out of Somalia here more than almost 40 years, has never had a government. So it is not a, a good song to hear mm -hmm. that we disintegrate. There is conflict. Conflict engulfs everything, even the things which we are talking about here, even the, the talk show which we are having here yeah. will never be there. So we need our leaders need to be very careful. Yeah. And really we need these conversations and we need really leadership. Political leadership is very, very important. And of course what we call political maturity and to put yeah, Kenya sure. first, yes. you know, before yes. anything else. I mean, those are some of the conversations we are having here. Remember we are keeping an eye at uh, the Milimani law courts where the three <laughs> Uh, Judge Bench is expected to sit uh, in a moment from now to listen to um, uh, various arguments uh, which are going to be floated by the uh, uh, by the lawyers uh, representing various uh, uh, parties. And, and so we have our reporter there, uh, Ruth Wamboy, who has just uh, given us an update as, as to what is happening. Remember, the bench was supposed to sit us from 9.30 up to now, which is what, and we are talking about 11, 12, almost 11, 15, uh, uh, the, the, the bench has not yet trooped into the courtroom. And so we are also keeping an eye to see exactly once they come, we shall pro, uh, 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 take you there so that you can listen to uh, the proceedings there. And, and also today we are also having the conversation around the COP29. Remember it is taking place in the city of Baku, Azerbaijan. We are talking about 15 days from now. The conversations that are going to take place there are going to be uh, very critical in shaping the world of environment and the future of our world. So it's going to be a critical meeting. It has always been, of course, uh, where, uh, uh, you know, world leaders, they converged. Last year, uh, the world leaders converged in, uh, in, in the UAE, uh, to be precise, you know, the city of Dubai where various uh, agreements were reached. And of course, uh, we're also keeping an eye to see uh, what exactly will come out of the COP29. Um, uh, you know, my, my, my bench this morning is, is fully constituted. Uh, we have, um, uh, allow me to 
check. We have uh, Dr. Mithika Mwenda. Uh, Mwenda. He's the uh, executive director at Pan African uh, Climate Justice, uh, joining us this morning. And of course, uh, Memory Kachambwa. Uh, she's the executive director at Femnet. And the joining us right now is Susan Otieno, who is also the executive director of Action Aid International Kenya. The beauty about this morning is that uh, I am joined by executives. <laughs> Everyone here is an executive. I think I should also get a title, Execu executive anchor, so that uh, all of us you know, can have that executive title. <laughs> Susan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You know, before you joined us, you know, uh, uh, we, 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 were, you know, we were breaking bread and trying to understand, uh, you know, everything that is happening in our court, you know, with these Gashagwa uh, impeachment and, 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 and so much. And, and, and we are trying to plead with Kenyans that, uh, hey, look here, this is a political process. It has now taken a legal uh, turn and things will be sorted out. We should go back to our business. We have a country to, to, to develop. Uh, we have a country to love. We have trees to plant. We have rivers to take care of. And we have each other to love. What is your message to Kenyans? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, one thing that we need to realize as a country that there are bigger issues beyond personalities and individuals um, to, to, to achieve. Um, if you look at what's happening globally, everyone is looking towards COP29. Yeah. And the big question is how much have we invested to prepare ourselves to be there, to prepare ourselves to, to really negotiate for what will work for us to prepare ourselves to ask questions around what has not worked. If you committed to be giving 100 billion a year towards climate financing, what have you given? Mm -hmm. If they are claiming they met the 22, uh, in 2022 they got more than 100 billion, but clearly 70% of it is uh, loans. So what, what, why do we only get 30% 30 30 in grants? What is the conversation ahead of us? As a country, sometimes we get derailed. We focus on um, individuals. We focus on issues that can be determined using the constitution. Mm -hmm. And it's because we, are, we operate in impunity. And so once you operate in impunity, the, the critical issues will bypass you because you want to show how you can push people around. And we are seeing it in everything. We are seeing it. We saw it in the finance bill. Allow me to go back there. People were pushed to the edge. And today, as we are talking, debts are pushing us to the edge. So there are critical issues that this country can truly focus on. If the decision was made, fine, that uh, the, the deputy president has, to, has been impeached, let us move to the next level. But also, not forgetting that um, whatever reasons caused him to be impeached should also be looked at across board. So we don't stop at the deputy president. We've not cleaned up. Mm -hmm. It's not just the deputy president. The government is made up of so many uh, facets, so many entities. Let's look through all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. I mean, we not want to get deep into the issues that brought us here. Um, and of course, because we are keeping an eye to see what the legal minds will tell us about uh, the, 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 the merits and demerits of these uh, impeachment motion. So the issues we want to discuss today is the COP29 and the road ahead. For the third time, the conference of parties is being held in an oil-producing country. That's right. Last year, it was in Dubai. The economy there is largely supported by fossil fuels. And before that, the COP27, it was held in Sham al Sh Sham el Sheikh. Um, it's a desert uh, uh, tourism city in uh, Egypt. And this time around, it is taking place in Azerbaijan, Baku to be precise. And so, you know, there has been many theories. Uh, what, is, what, what is happening? Why are, th are we having, you know, the critical climate meetings being held in countries whose economies are driven by oil? That's a question I want to hear. Uh, I want to pose to uh, Dr. Mithika Mwenda. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> I think um, I have uh, been part of this process for quite more than a decade. Mm -hmm. um, and just that's, you know, an operational issue. Even before we go, it's a, a, I could call it a geopolitical issue mm -hmm. and a geostrategic issue. Uh, what really determines at the, the UNFCCC uh, uh, who hosts the COP is, you know, a UN process 
where there must be rotations, they are, it's rotational. There is a, 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 the a time for Africa, there is also the, just regional. It has to, to, to be hosted. Mm -hmm. And so what it determines then that is, uh, first of all, the capacity of that particular country mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to host. And uh, the question is drawn to the, that particular region. Like now, it was the time for Eastern Europe. And there was a very heated debate. You know, geopolitically, the main countries which could have uh, really hosted there, maybe we could have had it in St. Petersburg or in Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been held in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Poland for around four times eh, mm -hmm. because of the same issue that uh, m many countries in th that region do not come out, you know, to take up the, you know, the, the initiative. And sometimes there is a time when it was supposed, you remember, when during the time of, uh, of uh, the, I think it's COP, uh, so one of the previous calls, mm -hmm. which uh, a Caribbean country was unable to host it in that country, then it was reverted back to Germany, the end quarters of UNFCCC. Mm -hmm. So there, 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 there are issues which surround this. And so, uh, in terms of then uh, the Azerbaijan, we were part of, uh, of this discussion uh, in Dubai, and the question was that who is going to host? And there are countries which were floated, and Russia, you know, is a member of uh, UN, is a member of UN, UNFCCC, mm -hmm. and uh, facing a lot of uh, sanctions because of the invasion of, uh, of Ukraine. 16,500 uh, sanctions. 16,500, and it sh there should be more. Mm -hmm. And so there was a talk, in fact, to host the COP in Ukraine. You know, some there decisions are held, are, are done through consensus. Mm -hmm. So ch that uh, uh, um, country, the country Russia could not have allowed. Actually, it's an insult, you know. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the magnitude of that meeting coming to that country, to that region, mm -hmm. which Russia believes that it is its fiefdom, you know, geopolitically, mm -hmm. that it must give a nod. Mm -hmm. And so what happened actually was uh, Azerbaijan came out. So as a, if you look at uh, the positioning of Azerbaijan, uh, between it is just at the tip of uh, of uh, of uh, Middle East, it borders Iran, and also it it is at the it is in uh, in uh, in uh, in Europe, Eastern Europe, and so its conduct politically has been very neutral. You know, so I think that for that matter, it was a compromised country. So the question of whether then mm -hmm. uh, it was at the end that capacity to host then came later on uh, really yes it uh, it can but you remember that uh, even delegations have been reduced it's a small country yeah. that's what we are grappling with mm -hmm. because it cannot host really that much you know in um, in in uh, dubai we had uh, seventy eight thousand delegates so each in all our delegations including even some governments have been reduced. We are not going to have that large delegations mm -hmm. uh, because of that, because, because the country has said mm -hmm. we have a small space, but we are going to facilitate. And that the, fact that the fact of the matter is that uh, the conference is being held in a stadium. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because they don't have a, they don't a have huge space. international yes. convention center yes. that yes. can host that. Yes. Uh, but but, but I, I want to turn to, to, to Susan here. Um, Dr. Mithika is saying that uh, this is... Um, uh, uh, an administrative issue. Do you agree with him? Uh, or, or do you see a strategic uh, decision to have COP meetings in oil producing countries? Because I mean, would you then argue the same for Dubai? Would you argue the same for Sharm El Sheikh? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I think we need to recognize the element of capacity and ability to, to host, mm -hmm. as he said. Um, but what is also very critical is uh, to ensure that uh, if you're hosting, then the presidency is with you as a, as a country. Uh, how well are you able to move from national context and focus on global issues? How well are you able to facilitate global conversations? Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that um, even as we go to Baku, despite the fact that it's an oil-producing nation, we are hoping that the global south can be heard 
in terms of climate financing, that we do not want loans, we want grants. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that they will facilitate an environment that will enable the polluters to listen to, those, to the non-polluters. We would call Africa non-polluting. We, we are hoping that they can see the world through, they can, they can put on the lenses, not just the national lenses, but they can put on a global lens. So for me, whether it is in Baku or not, the bigger question is that this COP, if we're going to focus on financing, let it help us get out of corporate capture that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. So that would be my question to the presidency. So Have the you facilitated mm -hmm. this? Yeah. So for, for, for you, the issue is not so much more about the venue, but the outcomes. Of, 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 the, of, of the conversations there. Exactly. I want to hear from you, um, 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 uh, Chi, Chi, Chi Tan. Memory. Yeah, okay, let me call you Memory. <laughs> Akini. Uh, Akini. Akini, Akini is fine. Akini is fine eh? <laughs> yeah, Memory. Uh, look, one of the critical issues that is going to be discussed in this meeting is climate financing. Mm -hmm. And more so, as Susan is, is saying, how more finances can trickle down to the, uh, the global south which unfortunately is the most affected by the vagaries of climate. Uh, what do you expect to hear from, from, from the meetings? So one of the things is this COP is going to come up with a new collective quantified goal. So it's coming up with a new goal in terms of finance. Over the past COPs, we've been battling with the 100 billion um, commitment, which was never met. Mm -hmm. So we were together in... Um, uh, in Glasgow for COP where we were actually saying where is that 100 billion and what the discussions were the countries which were supposed to actually pay because one they are the polluters they have the highest carbon emissions mm -hmm. And three is also what we are also calling reparations. You see, Africa has got the least in terms of the carbon emissions. Our terms of production, in terms of uh, industrialization is very low. And we actually have the brunt of the whole global climate crisis. Mm -hmm. Yet we do not have the financing that allows us to be able to also transition you know, we're talking about all this green transition to be able to be at par and to actually get out of this uh, climate poverty that we find ourselves as developing countries. Mm -hmm. So what we are expecting is to really have candid discussions and for the rich countries, I think Dr. Mithika likes calling them rich countries, mm -hmm. but we are the ones who've made them rich. Mm -hmm. um, so we want countries to really own up into their commitments. We find that most of the time they are talking loans, like what, uh, to increase the debt burden. And we know already on the African continent, we are already, uh, of all the countries that have defaulted on debt, it has been four African countries. So we're already either in debt distress or we are already in debt catastrophe. So we cannot have um, finance coming is more debt. Mm -hmm. We must have it in a way where it also allows us to be able to meet uh, some of the goals, if it's in loss and damage, if it's adaptation. So the Africa group uh, has actually been pushing very strongly in that debate, in the negotiations. And I think what is always disappointing is we already have countries which come just to ensure that there's no decision based on that because they do not want to commit. So The, the so-called disruptors. The, the disruptors, but they're disrupting in a way where we have a global crisis. We're mm -hmm. in a poly crisis as we speak. And we really need to have, um, you know, not to waste a lot of time coming up with, okay, these are the technicalities of the new collective quantified goals, but to actually come with means of implementation and means of making sure that the money actually gets to the frontline climate activists, to the countries which are affected by the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. So we are really expecting to really have, I think from the global south, we really are very much committed in terms of um, 
pushing for that and we really want the global north and the rich countries to be able to own up mm -hmm. because what we need is really the financing on the ground I, I, I want to bring you on board uh, uh, dr. Mithik I mean you've been a champion of uh, increasing adaptation uh, finance um, here in Africa and when you look at for example in 2022 you know, Africa, which, which bears the brunt of, our climate, of I, I, the effects of climate change, I mean, it's, it's received less than 25 billion US dollars in terms of our, our, our climate ad adaptation financing. And there has been clarion calls to increase this to, to, to even 100 billion dollars. I mean, do you expect to see this happening in COP29? Um, you know, COP29 is not a, a finance mobilization COP. It lays a broad framework on uh, what is required uh, for really it's a conversation. <coughs> and uh, as he has mentioned, we in uh, COP15 uh, in Copenhagen uh, in uh, 2009, the global community agreed on, uh, on, uh, on first of all, there, used, there was something on short term. Uh, uh, on uh, on uh, the the fast track, which the, when the President Obama mm -hmm. was the, uh, uh, handing the United States, yeah. and so this uh, the fast track of ten billion, mm -hmm. which we never saw, mm -hmm. which was to go to one one year, mm -hmm. and then of course now the 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 the, uh, the, the infamous hundred billion US dollars, which actually there was no just no a minute, uh, we, we need to go to the. Um